Greetings, greetings everyone. Um, welcome to Channel Other Doc. I'm Jim. I use he, him pronouns. And this is the fourth and final session of our Amber Diceless campaign. And uh, it's, it's been a heck of a ride, and I'm just I'm delighted to, uh, to, to get to this point, and we'll see what happens. Um, lots going on. Uh, but first, let's go around and introduce everyone. And we shall start with Pope. Hey, everybody. Uh, Pope here. And, uh, yeah, things are, things are tense uh, when we last left off. So um, I will see if uh, Addison, my now personal favorite trash wizard, uh, will survive at considering the bevy of D-starting problems that are surrounding all of us. Uh, let's let's cross our fingers. And hope things work. We should see. We should see. All right. Let's uh, move on to Chris. Hello. Right as she takes a drink. <laughs> Hello. Hello. Um, I'm Chris, and I am. This has been a really fun ride so far, and we'll see how much of our sanity survives at the end of this. So. I've already gone insane once going through the Logos, so let's go for it again. It'll be fun. Second <laughs> time's a charm. Yes, all right. All right, and uh, on to Anino. Hello. Hey, uh, my name's Anino, and I'll be playing. Um, hey, can, uh, can everybody hear me okay? Hey, Anino, can you hear me? I, I, I sort of dropped off for a second there. Yeah, I can hear you. Okay, good, good, good. Sorry, I thought you were. I, I thought there was a there was a mic issue thingy. Cool, cool. Excellent, excellent. Um, so I, I I don't know if we heard I don't know if we heard we heard your character's name. It's there on the screen, is all it is. <laughs> but um, um, let's finally let's uh, move on to Anders. Hello. Hi, uh, I'm Anders, and uh, I use he, him pronouns. You can find me at Anders underscore D underscore K on the internet. Tonight I'm playing Lady Charlotte, who uses she, her pronouns, and is very terrified. That might not be her, that might be me. <laughs> it might be both. We'll see. Who knows? Who indeed knows? Um, let me see if I've got this listed here. Excellent. There it is. Good, good. All right. Um, so as is the uh, as is the case for uh, for most of the games on this channel, we are going to be using the X card, the N card, and the O card. Um, if we hit something that's crossing a line for one of the players, any of them can type an X in the Zoom video chat or anywhere else, um, or make an X symbol, and uh, then we'll back up and we'll do something else. Uh, if something happens that they're okay having in the game, but they don't want a graphic description of it, uh, they can type an N uh, in the Zoom chat, and uh, then we'll be able to fade to black on it or put it behind a veil. So it'll be there, but we won't go into detail. Uh, finally, uh, if you're exploring a topic or area of role, or a topic or an area of role play and that's particularly intense for you, but you want to keep going, um, you can put an O in the chat to let us know you're okay and that we're good to keep piling on the drama. Uh, something else we can do is put an O with a question mark after it when we're moving into a difficult topic or we say or we do something and then think, maybe that might have been a little too much. Uh, then every, everyone else can respond to that and let us know if we're still doing okay. And away we go. So, um, yeah, we are, as I recall, at a, uh, at a point close to the middle of things, um, close to a place where in the sort of the center point of shadow between you have these two poles of, as we've stated numerous times, you have amber on one end, which houses the pattern, the, basically the, the exemplar of order, and then on the other end, the quartz of chaos that houses the logris, the exemplar of chaos. And this is, and in between are almost any universe imaginable, any reality imaginable, um, in, uh, that are shadows of these real places. And so we're 
At a point along the middle, there is a dusk road that travels now these days from one to the other that you that shadow folk even can use to travel it, go from place to place much more easily. Because it was it was uh, determined last time that as all the pieces were coming together, that um, one of the uh, that one of the ladies of chaos, Dara, has uh, apparently allied with a number of uh, a number of folks. Uh, one in particular is a shroudling, a vampire-like being from the uh, the other side of the mirrors, to come out and start taking over this. Uh, taking over a pirate fleet that uh, goes back and forth, and that pirate fleet is apparently doing something involving the, the, the controlling, perhaps, or at least the, uh, the grabbing up of dragons. It's not clear exactly what it is that they're doing, but perhaps we'll know very shortly, because also there is uh, something that doesn't get spoken of a lot, is that there is actually a second pattern out near the middle of things. And we are in the shadows very close to it. And there are certain energies at play as a result. Our, uh, our characters are here because there is every possibility that if these dragons, as they pass through shadow and bring shadow storms with them, because they're kind of powerful in that respect, uh, that it may sort of make pieces of reality come entirely unstuck, and that won't be good. Not to mention, you know, countless lives of shadow folk out there. That's, that's also a thing. Also, you know, it's just a long game played between one end of reality and the other, and this is the latest gambit. So, you folks have found yourself in this place. This is a shadow where that it's inhabited. It looks kind of in some ways like uh, a version almost of kind of 17th or 18th century France in some ways. Um, you have all these, um, very nice sort of, uh, you have this river, you have these houses, trees with, uh, and trees with things that are like, uh, trees with blossoms on them out by this river, these houses behind these iron gates, and one in particular looks a lot like a castle behind one iron gate toward the end of this particular block. People walking around with skin that shines slightly, they're not, they're not human. Uh, but there are other shadow folk, but they have this skin that shines from uh, sort of a goldish to reddish tone. And uh, walking around in renaissance-ish looking clothing. So it is here, and this is not like the heart of a city that you're in. This is a kind of outskirts type area. It's not not Spartan. It's, it's kind of sparsely populated, but as you've come in, uh, recently, uh, so, uh, Addison was uh, attacked mentally for a brief moment and then managed to uh, shove that attack over into the beast that he was riding, which was an elephant, a striped elephant, uh, which then was yanked away immediately. Um, and then uh, as the others came, the, sort of, the wind started blowing and this sort of rainbow pattern appeared in the sky, sort of shifting colors. It's almost looking slightly vortex-like up there. And you have perhaps a moment to prepare. What would you all like to do? I'm already in demon form, so I would I would assume I have uh, some type of shield spell hanging in my Logris pattern and go ahead and initiate that. Did you, uh, did you tell us? I don't think you told us last time what your demon form looks like. Do you have a... An idea uh, what, like. what do you look like I, in your demon form? Uh, large bat wings, um, two sets of horns, and a, uh, I would say, a and snake-like skin with a uh, long tail. Excellent. Basic demon form. Okay. And the colors would be uh, black to green, sort of iridescent 
across the skills. Cool, so. cool. And I was uh, carrying Lady Charlotte, I believe. Yes. Uh, <laughs> I'd like to get down first off. <laughs> and thank you. Um, I'd like to, and I think I understand how to do this, but I could be wrong. Um, that's Anders doesn't really understand. I want to take one of the spells that's stored in my mask mm -hmm. and begin to do the linchpin for it so that I can cast it. Okay, yeah, that'll, that'll, uh, if, uh, what you've done is you've previously taken time to hang the spell in the mask. All you, all, mask, all you need to do is just say, say a word, which is the linchpin, and that okay. activates the spell. So it doesn't take an additional 10 minutes? No. no oh, oh, uh, oh, awesome. Yeah. Fantastic, then. Then I'm just going to prepare to cast a spell. Yeah. All right. All right. So you're, so you're getting, getting ready. Um... Oh, and once Lady Charlotte's on the ground, can I launch myself? I assume I'll have talons and whatnot, so that I'm ready to do an air dive attack if something rides. Sure, you can find a, a perch and uh, like leap up to, uh, to do it. There's there's trees, there's rocks around here, things of that nature. If you want to do that, there are buildings. <laughs> if you want to do that, yes, something so that if I need to do an air dive or attack something in the air, I have a better grip to jump up and grab. I will say a few of the townspeople are kind of uh, have seen you now and they're starting to like panic. Um, but uh, let's see, Lanada, is there anything you're doing to prep right now? Uh, absolutely not. Uh, he is just floating on his cloud, um, drinking his drink and, uh, you know, balancing his staff across his shoulders. Okay. All right. Is there... What, what does he think of all this right now? Uh, he's just going to take it as it comes. He's not really concerned about uh, things because uh, he's rather zen in his uh, approach to life. Uh, and he really doesn't care about whether or not he earns a fiefdom for his services. Honestly, idea. he would probably, you know, if he really thought he was going to be threatened or will perish in this upcoming battle. He'll probably just bail out of the uh, place and instruct his cloud to uh, transport him to the another uh, shadow realm that he um, passed through before. So. Oh, that'll work. That'll work. Yeah. Um, Addison, doing anything special to prepare? Well, considering where we left off at last time, where the elephant's gone, my great-grandmother is trying to assault me. Um, they all just showed up. I yelled, run at them. Um, yeah, what? Everything's gone to shit. Run. Uh, and produces, like, some sort of spoiled vegetable. Uh, th throws it uh, onto Lenata's shoe. We're friends now and then proceeds to leap into the river and trying to bring up the broken pattern because he needs to run. Okay. Uh, I will say that um, you are able to um, get the... D -d -d -d. I'm just checking a couple of things. Uh, you're able to, 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 to lob it in the direction of the shoe. Um, which is currently okay. hovering up in midair um, on the cloud. Um, but sure. it's, Lenata, it's up to you whether or not it hits because he's, he's, he's good, but you can you can move out of the way you realize as this thing is this projectile. I'm sorry, what's, what did he throw at Lenata? Like a, a, a small, spongy, tomato-ish like thing that smells like rotted Limburger. Oh. Um... I'm going to suspect that my cloud horse will just eat it. <laughs> nice. So yeah, you maneuver the cloud horse just to, just a hair and it, uh, without even really having to think much about it. Um, and, uh, yeah, it's able to kind of just, it, it does hit the cloud horse before it's able to catch it, but it does eventually, it, it sort of grabs it. And I don't know if it has a mouth per se. We haven't really said, um, 
but it seems... uh, it's probably uh, amoeba-esque in yeah. its uh, consumption of things. So it hits the side of the cloud and it starts <laughs> going in. Um, so I think now is roughly the time when the sky opens up. So this, uh, see this sort of almost like this, this tear starting to happen in the sky and, uh, just kind of comes down <laughs> In a, uh, you know, in a crack-like fashion, actually. And it's just in, localized to that area, and there's this little, kind of almost a whirlwind now that sort of come that you can visibly see in there. Um, and this sort of, some sort of a cloud whirlwind thing, and it parts, and you see a dragon burst out. Um, I actually have, for anyone who's interested, this isn't, necess isn't absolutely necessary, but I've got kind of a, a visual reference up in Roll20 if anyone wants to see them. Um, but uh, this is sort of what this is. So they've got long necks. Um, uh, most of them, they're of kind of varied types. Um, but uh, this one that bursts out is kind of a dark green. And uh, this first one, sort of wings on its back, kind of it comes out. Part of the cloud seems to be coming with it. This is the big cloud that it's coming out of, the big one. Um, and uh, you can see that attached to it, and it's kind of like uh, surging forward, uh, not pleasantly, um, as you see kind of attached to it are these is some kind of um, some kind of a rain that's sort of like been dug into its uh, its shoulders um, and you see that uh, or it's really it's a line that's going from it to and you see that goes into the into the rift and coming out of the out of the rift behind it uh, you see a sky ship um, it's roughly, I want to say it's not about, it's not like the size of a galleon necessarily. It's a little bit smaller than that. Um, but it's a, it's a fairly decent sized, uh, fairly decent sized ship. Um, it's got, um, I think that these, um, these airships, uh, will have, you know, they, I, I imagine them having like the, um, <coughs> Uh, just basically having like the the bag of hydrogen or whatever it is above it and um, or thing that operates in that fashion uh, chemical reactions changing from shadow to shadow so it has to have certain abilities baked into it um, with kind of the sort of more ship like portion hung underneath that uh, you see sort of crew running back and forth on deck um, and as this, uh, as this dragon sort of sails out and it's kind of like, ah, kind of going around, they're kind of pulling it too to kind of keep it from getting too far away. Their crew is starting to, uh, to move down and they're going to start, uh, start moving closer to the buildings. Um, is anyone doing anything? Can I leap and try and fly over to where and land on the balloon type thing. Mm -hmm. And can I then at that point, um, do I have, I don't, I haven't, I, I apologize. I probably should be more uh, prepared. Do I have like a explosion type spell hanging? But that seemed. Did you buy, I, now I don't have um, sorcery. I anymore. have, I have Logris and I have shape shifting. So I don't, okay. I don't. So you don't actually have sorcery, but you can, if you want to summon something that can explode, you can do that um, okay. using the Logris. So then I would like to land on the balloon and summon something that will explode onto the balloon and then take off. Okay. Um, 
let's see. So you're not on the dusk road right now, so the laws are going to be local to here. Um, and you see the balloon itself is actually having a little trouble as it's getting in here, um, as it's trying to adjust to the local... Um, atmosphere. Local and atmosphere and such. So are you just... So how much time are you taking to try to find this uh, thing that will... Exp that's some, some kind of... I'm going... Engine? I, 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 well, one, I would land with my talons like locked into it because this, this yeah. kind of test strong materials. Yeah, I'm going to go it. for quick and dirty on the uh, explosion. So even if it's in within this shadow itself, I'm. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, I can see that. Um, what kind of thing are you looking for? Something that will make a big boom. Sure. Um, okay. And that's, that's, that's the entire, that's, the the entirety of the uh, of the uh, of the the request that you put in. Okay. So, could that summon a person? It might. <laughs> if she if she's targeting one, <laughs> um, it could be. Because I mean, the plan that Lenata was going to have was he was actually going to spear through that balloon and uh, use his power word to spark an explosion. Um, behind him. So, if that's all your criteria is, you realize that uh, the, the next thing that's going to blow up here is probably going to be Lenata. <laughs> oh, um, yeah, let's not do that. Um, can I s bring Lenata to the where I am? Um, I mean, Lenata can get there fine, but if you want to, if you want to help help him a little, sure, just give him a little more uh, uh, <laughs> traction. You can just have a tendril out and just <laughs> reel him in. <laughs> I will grab him with my tendril. <laughs> okay. Sorry, Lenata. I'm just trying to get you into location to do yeah. more damage. Lenata, it seems like your plan is being uh, is being kickstarted. What would you like to do? <laughs> All right. So. Um... So Lenata's cloud is going to actually take a, a more serious form in the actual shape of a, a horse. And it's going to just stride at its top speed um, following this tendril, I guess. Maybe being assisted by this tendril mm -hmm. straight for the um, straight for the balloon of the um, high pirate ship or whatever it is. And uh, you're going to see his um, staff turn into its more proper form, which is a fairly significantly sized uh, spear. And uh, as he's um, sailing towards it, it's going to actually segment out and extend um, a good 20 feet in front of him and sort of just um, puncture his way through the balloon. Uh, and as he's uh, coursing through the balloon um, and comes out the other side, he's just going to point his finger and use his um, um, power word spark um, at the gas behind him as he, um, you know, takes his uh, trajectory path and uh, to its uh, final Excellent. At that point, I'm going to leap off and fly away from the getting ready to explode balloon. <laughs> so as you uh, as you plunge through, and you just basically it's coming behind you, and you're just sort of like, <laughs> and uh, as you're coming out, and you see as this 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 craft as they're trying to maneuver it into a position to kind of kind of head down, and you saw see that some of them were getting some nets ready to try to throw on some of the people running around down there. The, the thing goes up uh, uh, like a candle. Uh, <laughs> a, uh, a Roman candle, no less. The, uh, the, this, this bag of air just goes... <laughs> and there's a lot of running and, uh, running and yelling now um, as people on deck are dashing back and forth. <laughs> so uh, it, it, it is passed through as he's... Um going by and watching this fiery um, mess mm -hmm. going about. Uh, he's just going to deadpan uh, oh, humanity. And uh, <laughs> his, his spear is just going to uh, uh, come back into its proper form and uh, he'll sort of just uh, circle around for his next target. Alright, well, 
they're coming because now you can see there are two more dragons now coming out of the uh, uh, coming out of the rift, and with lines trailing out behind them, and uh, also yeah yeah that's uh, so, so so that's so that's starting to happen at this point. As this is happening, I want to down on the ground hold out a hand, and just say. Oh, darling dragon. And when I say the word dragon, it sort of vibrates and echoes. It's time for you to sleep. And the word sleep echoes and repeats and repeats and repeats. I'm going to cast Quell on the dragon and put it to sleep. Excellent, excellent. Do, 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 do. Let me just take a look here. All right. Good, good. All right. Um, let me just let me go to your. All right. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. You. Um. Yeah. These dragons don't have terribly powerful psyches. You're starting to realize they're they're good, but you're and so you realize sort of as you you kind of have to force the spell onto it a little bit. Um. So you have to kind of just sort of there's a little bit of a there's a brief battle of wills. Um, but then the dragon closes its eyes and starts, starts heading, and I assume this is one of the ones that's, that's now coming out of the, one of the two ones coming out of the roof now, yes? Or, or is it the first one? I think if I put the first one to sleep and their hot air balloon is exploded, all of those people are going to die, and I don't want to kill anyone, so I'll put one of the other dragons to sleep. Gotcha. All right, so this uh, second dragon that's coming out, we'll, we'll say it's a purple one, um is like and it now it's sort of begins turning in sort of uh, in an in, uh, involuntary barrel roll as it's heading downward dragging this uh dragging this ship behind it <laughs> it's coming down is like Aah! it's going back and forth the second ship as it comes down next to the river and it's just <sighs> as people are trying to desperately get out of the way they're running every which way um and uh, you can see someone on the ship, as you can kind of sort of barely hear something like, cut the lines, cut the lines. Someone is, uh, as before the ship intersects with the ground, it barely manages to release the cable that it's got around, the, uh, that's got around that dragon and is like pulls up just at the last moment, but it's still, it's still just sort of drifting very, very short distance from the ground. Meanwhile, the sh third ship is coming out simultaneously, and it's it's holding off a bit, coming off to the side, and uh, it seems to be going for uh, some of the folks at the edge of the uh, at the the edge of things that have been running off to try to get off into the uh, into the forest and what have you. Can I try and bring a? group of stampeding herding type animals for the dragon to chase Ooh. <laughs> yeah you can you can do that um so you find a perch somewhere where are you perched right now on a building okay so you land on uh, on one of these buildings and you start reaching for a herd of animals for the dragon to chase this is not going to take long because you recently reached into a shadow and figured out where there was a herd of animals. Uh, so, and that shadow you notice is actually shrinking a little bit, so you should probably grab them now. I will grab all I can and aim them away from the town. Okay, it's going to take, uh, it's going to take a minute to uh, actually, uh, to, to actually... Um, get... Uh, to, to get all of them. You're going to have to summon them a few at a time. Um, so you're working on that. And uh, there you, uh, so on the op off side, you start to hear this stampeding and more elephant noises as uh, this this dragon off to the side is now sees these... Uh, this, Delicious this, elephants. These, Go eat them. This, <laughs> yellow, this yellow dragon is just sort of looking down. It's like... Ah! And the boat again is trying to come around. It's like, what the... Uh, and they're they're now trying to figure out you know getting control of their dragon, um, so yeah it looks like it looks like that's happening. It looks like there may be a few more uh, a few more of these coming, um, 
but uh, uh, as it is currently. Right now, the rift is kind of staying at a particular size. Um, let's see, what's Addison doing? We've not heard from him in a second. Well, if I made to the river, mm -hmm. which is itself a crack in the earth, um, going to just knowing Dar is still around, and this is bad. This is epically bad. Um, going to try for a desperation maneuver that he only ever heard the family talk about once. And that is trying to go to the one place where he's probably the strongest right now. A place that is awful and has the pattern. Dara's mind. Interesting. Okay. So, hmm. So the river is carrying you, and you're kind of sort of finding the cracks as you go. And, yes, I think that as you're doing this, you're taking a few, uh, a few, well, gates and alleys, you actually end up underwater for a bit and then back up above and things sort of change around you as the river gets more and more polluted, as things gradually, the sky gets grayer and darker and starts kind of spinning a little bit. And uh, everyone sees Addison just dive down and he does not come back up. And I will get back to you in a moment. But... It looks like on this on this branch of things that you've got so um, one ship that's still flying around is looking like it's looking for a place to land. Um, one ship that is crash that is now crashing behind a couple of buildings um, in a massive ball of fire. A third ship that's being carried off, um, and then it looks like there may be one more dragon coming through actually. Um, this one looks bigger than the others. It is red. I have a question. I have an, I have an idea, and I don't know if I'm capable of doing it, but you said something about the rift staying in one size. Mm -hmm. Is the rift the type of magical energy that is manipulatable? Possibly. It is uh, the stuff of shadow. Um, well, I have a spell called shadow manipulation. Really? I do, yes. <laughs> well, what a good coincidence that this is made of shadow. I want to shrink it down to the size of a pin. Okay. So. Let's see here. do 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 Hmm. Oh, yes. Yeah, it's a rift in... Oh, this is a micro spell. That's very clever. Okay. Yeah, all right. Um, so... Yeah, you, so it... This, uh, since this, this, this takes a moment because uh, this, is, uh, this, is, this is one of your micro spells, so it's basically yeah. a thing that you're using to kind of cast now. Yes. Um, but you're not having to add anything else to it, so it's not going to take horribly long. Um, what you manage to see is this big dragon is coming out. It's mostly out, and just behind it, it's not a ship that you see necessarily, but something that looks a little bit more like a chariot. Um, so this thing has a couple of reins on it, and it's leading up to this one individual clad in black who's standing on this sort of chariot-like platform um, that you can barely see with color shifting behind him. Um, his hair is kind of flowing. Um, and he just sort of looks down, and that's when your micro spell goes off. Um, what does this look like when you do this? Is it just, there, does anything like energy arc from you, or does it just... Uh... It's... From on her end, it's subtle. It's just a hand movement. 
There's no spark, there's no arch. The rift itself, though, almost seems to get sewn up, like it's just sort of gets pulled and tightened and tightened and tightened until there's just the smallest sliver left. So the interesting thing here is the dragon is mostly through. Um, you managed to cut off the chariot rider and clipped the dragon's wings a bit as uh, the thing shrinks down and is sewn shut. You think you just barely see his, uh, the, the chariot rider see this and you see that he does something. You're not sure exactly what it is that he does. Um, but he seems to vanish from that chariot just a split second before the, uh, before the hole sews up. So you're not sure exactly where he went. Um, but yeah, the hole is now closing. And this red dragon is now like, and it's coming around and it's circling. It's like looking around for something. So, um, just to, for anyone keeping score, we currently have uh, two uh, two ships. One being dragged way off, uh, way off by a yellow dragon. Uh, one that uh, whose green dragon is now asleep on the ground. Um, that is in his in and of itself trying to come around to land. And then of course there's a red dragon circling around trying to figure out what the hell's going on. And, uh, what are the three of you doing? Okay, so the ship, the first one exploded, yes? Yes. Okay. Um, so now there are only two. I'm thinking, uh, is it possible for me to move the ships from shadows? You'd probably need to be on a vantage point where you're on the ship to be able to do that. Um, it's well, it may, it's pretty big. Um, let me let me take a look here at something. Uh, your, your psyche is good. Um, you could probably <coughs> you'd have to do them one at a time, um, and it would take a little time to uh, to maneuver it. Um, because it's it's uh, you're moving a very large object through shadow, um, with the just the power of your own imprint of the logris. Um, let's do the one that. Uh, okay, so one's exploded. One's attached to a sleeping dragon. One's attached to the yellow dragon that's chasing. And I don't necessarily have to move the dragon, just the ship, right? Yes. Yeah, you can do that. Yeah. So I would like to move the ship that's attached to the yellow dragon mm -hmm. um, to that shadow where I pulled the elephants from. <laughs> oh. Oh my god. <laughs> and just... <laughs> yeah. So I'd like to go ahead and... If I need to fly and like land on the ship, that's yeah. fine. Yeah, you'll yeah. kind of need to do that. Yeah. That's fine. Okay, you flap over. <laughs> um, so you're flapping over to land on that ship and start pulling it, pulling it through. Um, as you were doing that, just I'm just going around and checking again. What is Lenata doing? <clears throat> so, um, is there one more ship left that uh, needs attention? There is. There is one more ship. It looks like it might be coming into land. Okay, so um, Lenada is going to guide his clouded horse down and uh, basically look for the helm of the ship, like the guy standing behind um, the wheel. Yep, yep. Um, and uh, He's wearing he, a bandana. He's wearing a bandana, okay. Of course he is. <laughs> um, sure. And so uh, he, he's going to skewer him, I guess, um, spear him right off the ship and, uh, you know, yeah, I guess that's it. 
Just okay. spear him off the ship and um, try to scan and see who the most important person is on the um, ship while he's at it um, for his next pass through. Okay. So, yes. So, you're going to come down. Yeah, th this is going to be pretty fast. You just sort of, because he's not expecting, he's landing, he's landing, and then, <laughs> as you just run him through with this spear and uh, and just kind of, you know, impale him and knock him off and you come back around. Um, and you're going to see, and, and then you start looking through the crew to see, and, you know, coming back around, you're looking at the, at the shifting and the crew to see if you can see who the most important person is, which uh, will reveal themselves in just a second. Uh, what is Charlotte doing right now? There's still a dragon left, right? The big one? Uh, yeah, big red dragon, still here. Um, yeah, big, red, big red dragon, uh, big... Uh, there's also a... Let me see. Wasn't there a... Yeah, there, there's a... Um, there are a couple of them. <laughs> there, I yeah, put there's one a, to sleep. Yeah, there's one that's asleep. Um, I think it's the purple one's asleep. Um, there is a... Uh, the green one was kind of attached to the to the thing that exploded, so it's probably not doing great right now. Um, but there, the uh, yellow one's way off, so yeah, you've got a big red one. It's just circling. I'd like to try to put that one to sleep as well. Okay. So... As you're calling out your uh, your spell on it, you're trying to quell it. You realize uh, that this one's going to take a little bit more. It's going to take a little bit more energy. You realize because it notices you the second you do that, and it's fighting you. It's fighting you a lot harder um, than the other one did, and it's sort of coming around. And is now, as it's starting, and you know it's starting to, to maybe drowse a little bit, but it's, as it's coming, it's just looking right at you and is coming into a dive as it's heading in your direction. I'm not going to break off. I'm going to put it to sleep. Yes! Staring down a red dragon. I love it. Um, and uh, so... Um, Zena, you land on this uh, on this yellow dragon ship uh, as as they're trying desperately to, to yank this dragon around away from these elephants that it's chasing. Um, they've got these nets that they are uh, they're casting about, and you start reaching with the logris. A couple of them, uh, a few of them, actually have noticed you on the. Uh, what part of the ship are you going to land on? On top of the balloon, of course. On top of the balloon. Okay. All right. A couple of folks down below, as you're doing this, there is sort of a shaking, and some there, there are there are a couple of folks higher up that are looking, and they're like, oh, crap, and they're starting to climb up. Um, That's okay. We're getting ready to go for a ride. Yeah. They can try and hold on. Yeah. So you reach, you reach, you reach forward, and you feel it pulling forward. Now, I think my question is, do you stay on the boat this whole time? Or do you just let it finish without you? I let it finish without me. Okay. You do have to go through shadow a little bit. You do. Uh, you dive forward. Um, and uh, um, down the Willy Wonka tunnel. Um, that, uh, <laughs> that is the Logris. That is Logris travel. Um, but you dive off. You're going to fall off into another nearby shadow as that one careens into the one that is being eaten up by uh, uh, by Primal Chaos. Um, Lanada, as uh, as you're looking at the, you know, looking around carefully, uh, you see that a couple of cabin, do the cabin doors fly open and you see a gentleman come Come up, dashing up uh, onto the uh, onto the deck. Um, this actually is looks very much like a uh, gentleman Charlotte saw a moment ago. Um, he's he's got a long black coat. He's he's got a cutlass. He's got long flowing black hair, 
And he's very pale as he is coming out. Um, and he leaps out onto the deck looking around and he sees you and you see immediately he he points his blade up at you and he comes in and makes and grimaces and you see he's got long pointed canine teeth oh uh no sparkles no sparkles uh, unfortunately this is uh uh, that, that's a different shadow. Okay. Um, <laughs> could, could I just fling the guy I skewered um, at him by extending my um, spear straight out? I, I sort of just want to emphasize that he was pointing at me. <laughs> and so I decided that I would point back at him. <laughs> spear. And it's rude to point. Just... <laughs> well, like, I, I'd point the spear out. The guy is still on it, obviously. And then he would just um, activate the power to segment it again. And doing such would sort of just propel um, his helmsman um, straight back at him. <laughs> Excellent. I, I, I love it. You're using his helmsman as a weapon against him. This is good. Um, okay. To do a quick comparison here, um, you hurl this uh, this deceased helmsman um, at uh, uh, at this captain commodore. You're not sure. He's got a pretty jacket, um, and he just barely manages. You see, it kind of knocks him in the side. He manages to dodge just out of out of the way, like just in the nick of time, um, and he stumbles a little bit. And you see, he uh, he grits his teeth, and he starts running toward you. Um, I don't know exactly how far away you are right now, but he's going to try to bridge the gap. <laughs> so he's going to um, he's going to leap from the uh, helm of his ship and try to um, attack me while I'm standing on my cloud. He is. That is what he's trying to do. Oh, okay. Um, You're about to see how high he can jump. <laughs> yeah, I, I guess I will. Um, so I'm just going to command my spear to um, uh, curl around in such a way that uh, it would intercept him and maybe wrap him in a uh, bind. Let's see if that works. Okay. All right. Um... He, uh, he jumps, he leaps up, and he can leap insanely high, it seems, um, as he's coming forward, and the spear curls forward, and it wraps around, and it actually, he manages to put an arm forward just in time, and it wraps around it, and so you still have kind of got him, it's still yanks him around, but you haven't got him completely because his other arm is free. Uh, as he's just managed to dodge just a little bit to the side and hover around, and he's coming down to try to slash at you. Um, you are able just just barely to to pull back just before his, uh, his blade comes down. So is he cutting vertically? Yeah, me? he's cutting vertically, yes. Um, so in an effort to dodge him... Uh, I'm going to actually have my horse rotate on axis so that uh, he, um, you know, moves off to the side like this and then inverts upside down uh, so that, uh, you know, we'll have the, um, the uh, Top Gun um, diplomacy in which uh, he's above him and below him and... Uh, yeah, so uh, at that point, um, Lenata is just going to give him the bird. Yeah. Unfortunately, gravity is still a thing, so he's he's now he's thrown down. Are you dragging him all along the ground? Are you that low to the ground? Or are you just, are you just, just letting him dangle down <laughs> uh, there? Uh, oh, so 
he wasn't floating still. Um, no, he was. He was never floating. Oh. He just could leap really okay. high. Um, all right. So, yeah, I guess uh, as he's falling, I think the spear is just going to let him go and let him plummet to the ground. And okay. uh, um, I don't think he's finished off yet. So I guess I'm just going to have to uh, have Lenata just float down after him and uh, beat him on the ground. Okay. So yeah, he comes in, he, he hits the ground and he rolls. Um, and, uh, it, you know, takes him until he's like, uh, he gets very close to this sort of cluster of boulders and he stops, you know, skids to all kind of finally, uh, leaps, sort of somersaults, pulls himself back up and he does that sort of three point standing thing. Um, so Charlotte, you are staring down this, this, this giant dragon as it is coming, coming, uh, coming down and it's, uh, you're basically playing chicken with this dragon. Um... As it's coming in for you, I'm uh, going to roar back at it and have my mask activate so the last word is spoken in, you know, kind of Skyrim like dragon tongue and just say, I said sleep and try to pull it under <laughs> I love all it. my psychic might. <laughs> and it's you got it. It's just very barely as you're, you're doing this, it's like you're, it gets very close until finally it like, yeah, and it slumps onto the ground and passes by you just inches <laughs> away from where you're standing <laughs> as it skids by on the ground, <laughs> now unconscious. I'm keeping this one. <laughs> um... See, that's going to take you a moment as you're uh, reorienting yourself uh, to get back. Um, but I just am, am curious. You're going to end up in a nearby shadow. Is there a particular direction you're going to want to head? No, back. Um, mainly, I'm going back to, to try place, and yeah. aim back for one of the ships and see where we are. So. All right, gotcha. Okay. There's still a ship flying. Can I feel if there's still a ship flying? Um, you'll, you'll know that in a moment. Okay. Um, but uh, there, yeah, you're not going to find any ships still flying at this point, I don't think. Um, so yeah, uh, Lanada is facing down this guy, um, who's like leapt up and just uh, is looking at you. Is just like as you're, as you're drifting closer. Who in the name of chaos are you? So, uh, um, Lenata's just going to look behind him and then point at his chest. It's like, you'd, me? Oh, are you an idiot as well? <laughs> and, um... <laughs> He's, uh, he's like, he's like start, starting to try to move sort of sideways, sort of defensively as he's, as he's watching you carefully. Okay. So, uh, Lanata is going to, uh, yawn, um, refresh his drink from, <laughs> from, from his horse and then hop down onto, uh, the ground. He's like, oh, I suppose I should be sporting about this. And, uh, you know, he'll start uh, wave, twirling his uh, sphere around. Um, and, you know, sort of stretch. And uh, he's kind of staggering around now because, uh, you know, he, he's really got a good buzz uh, going nice. on. Um, he's uh, really loose from all the uh, spirited writing that he, he's been going on. Um, and then uh, he's just going to... Uh, gesture with uh toast him with the uh, red solo cup and just be like oh um yeah let's do it excellent so i kind of picturing the two of you sort of leap forward and clash uh for a moment perhaps or no 
No, um, okay. he's going to actually faint, and he's going to faint, uh, nice. and but let the uh, let the vampire um, do a, take a shot at him. But he's going to sort of just dodge it um, by drinking his cup, um, and uh, as he comes up from um, his sip, he's actually going to spray it in uh, the vampire's face, but then use his. Uh, extended finger and use his power word spark again to uh, ignite the alcohol. Oh my god! Uh, as it's, uh, <laughs> I love like it. flashing in his face, and uh, yeah. But so you do that uh, as, he's and so he's sort of he's coming forward. He almost actually gets you. He's very, you know, you're you're, you're just barely in time again before he can, uh, before. Before his cut gets to you, and you come, you come, and you, you spray, and you know he's coming around for a counterattack that you're not sure whether you're going to be able to block or not. But you spit on him and you spray him with fire, um, <laughs> and his coat is now on fire. Um, this is a distraction to him once again, and he tumbles off to the side, and he is immediately now uh, sort of tumbles around behind, uh, attempt, sort of in the direction of behind one of these boulders. And his you can see he's he's trying to get his coat off as he's doing this. <laughs> oh, okay. So, um, so Lena is going to spin really rapidly um, and gather enough momentum, and then he's going to uh, bring his sphere around and um, jab it straight forward. And he's going to use the spear to just um, puncture through the boulder and try to impale whatever is standing behind it. Oh my god! <laughs> okay. So you vibrate this thing. <laughs> yeah! <laughs> You're coming close. You pull back. You're just sort of arcing toward it. I'm imagining, I'm imagining a couple of Kurosawa shots as you do so. Uh, from different angles. As you're streaming down toward this thing. You crack the boulder in half. And... He almost makes it out of the way. Almost. But he's got his jacket off. He's dropped his... Uh, he, he had to actually drop his sword to get his jacket off. You have now stabbed him straight through his left hand. <laughs> Which is now impaled to the ground. Um, and I, I feel as though as this is happening... And all this this debris is everywhere. Um, knowing that he's otherwise going to be caught. Um, and he's uh, as as he's very rapidly grabbing his uh, his blade. He cries out, and as he sort of sho shoves around to keep himself on the opposite end of the... Uh, you, you, were, you went past because you had to, to get, you know, because of momentum. Sure. Um, he comes around, and as you're coming back around, <laughs> I assume for another pass, I'm not sure. <laughs> uh, well, you see him, he's basically fumbling and picking up his blade. What, what are you doing? <laughs> um, so did I uh, shoot past him uh, in, in this... Uh... Endeavor a little bit, yeah. I mean, the spear is in the ground and his hand and through his hand right now. Oh, um, okay. So he's going to um, use the uh, spear like a um, like a pole vault and um, soar into the air, inverted, and then he's going to come down and he's going to do a corkscrew spin into a stomp onto the uh, guy's uh, chest. Um, and he's going to do it with a, uh, a sort of uh, Bruce Lee banshee yell as he's doing it. Because he's actually really into this. Uh, he, he's, he's really into making this his finishing um, nice. strike. And, uh, yeah. So... You come up, and you are corkscrewing down. You're going to make contact with him, but something that he, he does as this is happening 
as he sees this, he kind of sees this coming. He can't move. So he's going to be, he raises his blade and he chops off his hand. <laughs> you you do manage to kick him in the chest, but un, but it's not quite the, uh, the finishing move you were looking for. He's staggering back, bloody stump, uh, with the one hand. He is sort of tumbles back into sort of the center of this uh, area of wide with boulders. And he's looking up, he's like, and he, he is grabbing something from a pocket, like a little sphere. And he is, and he is, looks like he's raising it up to do something. Uh, what would you like to do? Um, how far away is he? Uh, he is, I'm going to say about maybe like eh, 15 feet. Okay. So, um, uh, Lenata's spear, when it segments out, mm -hmm. um, it can extend out as far as 20 feet. So, uh, he's just going to um, extend the spear out and uh, just um, stab straight through whatever it is is in his uh, remaining hand. Okay. Um... So, <laughs> what you manage to do is he lets go of it, not on purpose necessarily, but you do manage to spear him through the other hand. <laughs> as it drops this thing with not quite the force he was hoping for. So it, it uh, hits to the side a bit. It hits the ground and there's this whoosh, as this, cl this, this low cloud appears very, very, very low. It's a very low flat cloud, silvery cloud that settles on the ground. And you now see that the ground and part of a boulder next to him is highly reflective. Oh, Okay. And he's like, ah! and he just, uh, as you're, uh, you've got him through a hand. What are you, what are you, uh, trying to do? Um, he's going to twist his, uh, spear in such a way to, um, you know, twist the point of the spear even more and try to catch a firmer grip of his hand. Uh, and then, um, have you ever seen the Shaolin uh, uh, meteor hammer? I have not, but it sounds exciting. <laughs> okay. <laughs> um, so it's basically that uh, it's a big heavy ball at the end of a very, very long chain. And uh, there's a lot of extravagant ways to build up a lot of um, uh, momentum and shoot it out in random places. He's going to use his now like segmented um, sphere. And he's going to um, twist and turn in such a way that he'll whip it around and uh, hopefully try to whip him at the end of the uh, spear. Okay. Um, as if he was sort of like on the end of a rope. Gotcha. So, <clears throat> um, you were starting this maneuver and sending it out and you sort of grab it a little off balance and he just falls onto the reflective ground and into it. Oh. Now, you do have him, and the and the, the spear is seems to be trying to, to fall with him and coming with him. He seems to be falling further and further. So, my question is, you have a couple of different things you could do here. Yes. You could try to pull away the, spe the spear, you could try to follow him in, or you could let the spear go. What, what do you want to do? Oh. Uh. The spear is just way too cool. He's actually going to uh, summon his cloud horse, um, hop aboard, and uh, pull back, or pull uh, as much as he can on the spear, and then guide his cloud horse straight up in order to um, basically lift um, the vampire out of the hole. Gotcha. So... <laughs> You yank up, you twist, you see this thing, it's, it's like embedded, it's, it's weird because as you're, as you're above the, 
as you're above that part of the ground, um, you see it's like a, it's, it's like a, it's a perfect reflection of what's above it. Um, except you don't see yourself, which you think you would see in there. That's the strange thing. Th the, the terrain is copied. People, for some reason, are not for a moment. You twist and you yank and you, you, you uh, pull up. And eventually it's like you're pulling against. It's like he's clinging onto something in there. You pull harder until finally you hear a tear. And it comes flying up. And what it seems you have is his other hand. Just his hand? His hand and part of his arm looks like he managed to, to get. Oh. As, well. uh, yeah. It seems like, so it started coming up. And it's actually the, the way that that happened, I should explain. As it coming up, you see this ripple across the surface of the, uh, of the mirror. And then it starts reflecting properly, it looks like. And, oh. But his hands on an arm is on this side. So it's like the mirror closed while his arm was part of the way through. So, um, ew, first off, uh, he'll say. And uh, the spear will retract. Um, and he's just going to uh, nonchalantly remove the guy's uh, hand and forearm. Uh, uh, off the end of the sphere and uh, look around and see. Um, all right, so who's next? So, oh my God. Uh, let's see, uh, Charlotte, uh, you you sort of saw the the tail end. You saw noticed that as uh, you sort of finished up with the dragon, that uh, you noticed Lenata was fighting someone over uh, over by a clump of boulders, and appears to have finished <laughs> he's doing something with his segmented spear um, and I think at this point this will be also when uh, Xena will make it back I think that the uh, yeah I think that's that's virtually there is still a boat with uh, there's still one ship that's kind of in chaos right now that's sitting on the ground um, but Xena will kind of come in not far from that boat and you're all sort of within, you know, spotting and communication dif distance of each other. So, does do we still want this boat here? Where's Addison? I didn't see where he disappeared off to. I was distracted by the fighting. I'm going to look around for Addison. So are there still, like, people on the ship that are going to be trying to, like, throw nets on? Well, yeah, there are people that are, uh, yeah, there are, there are a few crew members still on the ship that are trying to, uh, trying to do something. Well, actually, hmm. Yeah, I think, actually, um, what you see, <laughs> you expected there to be people on the ship, um, but it looks like they're like a, only a couple left, and they're running for the uh, they're running for the cabin for some reason. I'm not sure that I like them doing that, so I think this ship too needs to go for a trip. Okay, um, you can get over to it. You just sort of where, where, do, where would you like to send it? I think it should be reunited with the other ship. Ah, excellent. Yes, you can grab hold of that shadow just before it collapses. Um, so you folks uh, see her do this. She, see her land on the uh, on this other ship, and she's reaching. And uh, if no one says anything or does anything, it's gonna whoop, out of out of existence. And once again, you're gonna yeah. end up, uh, Zena. You're gonna end up in a uh, side shadow. Um, and I think this is the point at which, uh, Lenata and Charlotte will see kind of, there is, so the ships are gone. People are still sort of like looking around panicked, but they no longer are in danger. There is a fire that people are trying to put out. Um, 
but after a moment, Lenata, Charlotte, is sort of onto this field next, you're sort of on this field next to the river. Um, <clears throat> you see that a figure has emerged from the, the big house at the end of the lane. It's just sort of looking at, looking over at you. What do they look like? Uh, looks, uh, looks kind of human looking, um, and is wearing, <laughs> is wearing a big, uh, sort of dark cloak. Um, and it's kind of walking, has a stick that they're walking with. Um, they're not limping or anything, they've just got a walking stick. And they're sort of coming around. Um, you're kind of on the other side of the river, he's sort of coming forward, the, uh, coming closer. Doesn't seem to be doing anything threatening. So Lenat is a little bit bored. He's actually going to take um, the remains of the uh, vampire's jacket, and uh, he's going to shrug off his um, it's very grungy. Nice um, it is a very nice coat. So nice that he's actually going to um, shrug off his uh, uh, 90s grunge um, uh, plaid shirt and put on the coat. That's a very nice uh, look for you. But I know, right? And... Uh, He's also going to use the vampire's hand and wave at the figure that's coming at him, at them. So, so he gets he gets a little bit closer, and um, you can see sort of a little bit under the cloak that he does have a sword at his hip, um, and he's wearing these kind of kind of grayish uh, trousers and a black shirt. And he just sort of looks up at he kind of looks up and he's just dark hair. And he sort of pulls back. He has kind of greenish eyes. He's very kind of wrink a lot of wrinkles around him. He looks up. He says, "Okay, what the hell are you people doing on my lawn?" And we're going to cut away from there. And uh, we're going to go over to Addison. As you. Uh, kind of been sort of coming through the river and you emerge somewhere. A lot, of, <laughs> oh, a lot of mist. It's very dark. It's very strange here. Okay, that was that was one of the worst ones. <sighs> Just trying to get an assessment for what's around. It's, it's kind of kind of swamp like? Um, but it's like yes and no, sort of swamp-like. Um, or wetlands, one might say. Um, but there is this... All of the trees are very... But uh, some of the trees are kind of... You sort of look at them, they're like... It's like they've got little streaks of metal through them or something, and it's sort of shining out a little bit. Um... And you see this, and you're kind of higher up, you think, well, sort of, which is weird for a swamp, but um, sort of look down at an area it drains into, and then it drains off, and there's still a lot of mist around. You see something glowing, sort of a silvery glow through the mist as you're, uh, as you're looking through. I have a sneaking suspicion I didn't end up where I wanted, but where I need to be. I hate this. And head towards that silvery glow, just vaulting, using his, his amberite strength and dexterity to just bandy through a, a place that feels familiar to him, and yet so strange. It I does. See. It is really weird. Um... So, as you come out and you feel as though you're kind of moving, it's almost like moving through cracks a little bit. Because you realize that you're very near to something kind of 
important and powerful. You're not sure if you've made it into her mind or where she wants to be. And uh, then there were technical difficulties, but that's all right. Um, so it is as you are kind of uh, wandering through here. Um, that yes yes good good cool cool hey no worries we're good we're good um that uh you find this sort of you realize you could shift just a little and end up wherever the source of that light is if you wanted to oh I've got such a bad feeling about this. Oh, I've got such a bad feeling about this. <laughs> Grabs hold of Rumor's Trump. Mm -hmm. If I'm going to have this bad of a time, I need witnesses. And so, because he just thinks he's smart enough, not that he is. He's going to make contact, but he's going to make contact as he transitions through towards the next shadow over. Okay. <laughs> so as you're doing this, um, you can hear rumor. Uh, you can kind of just faintly see she's on the deck of a ship of some kind. Um, and uh, it looks like there's been, there's, there's been some fighting that seems to be quieting down around her. Um, and she looks up and she says, who is it? It's Addison, your favorite family member. Has something happened? Over it. Did you get them on your end? Oh, we got, it's we got them so, over here. It's so much worse. In fact, here, let me show you. Reaches in. Oh, you want to pull her? Uh, oh, oh no, you're just offering to pull her through. Yeah. Uh, all right, one moment. And she she adjusts her she adjusts her belt, and she. Uh, and she, she signals to someone and nods, and she takes your hand and steps forward. And the two of you emerge as you are doing this onto this sort of peaceful, flat plain area. There are, there are a few trees about. And in front of a particularly... Not a huge tall tree, but it's a very, looks like an older one um, that has grown up. You see that sitting in front of it, is, there is a kind of a sort of a picnic table. And behind the picnic, and there, there appears to be a couple of items of food. There's a simple meal on it. Uh, there's, a, there's a basket and some wine. And behind it, sit, uh, behind those things, sitting, sitting there, just calmly, is the figure of a woman. She looks like she might be in her 20s. She's got short brown hair, and she is somewhat freckled. And she has a sword at her hip. And uh, Do I recognize her? Does she remind me of someone? She does remind you of someone, yes. There is a familiar look about her, and she seems to recognize you. She also recognizes... Uh, uh, she also recognizes Rumor. She looks up and she says, Hmm. Well, I must say that was very clever of you. Well done. I uh, had to dispose of the... I had to dispose of the corpse of the thing over there. Unfortunately, it didn't quite make it. Would you care to sit? I think perhaps we should parlay. Just give a qu quick look to Rumor to make certain that they understand just how screwed we are. Rumor is, like, is just looking at her. And just... 
is not pleased right now. Uh, not pleased at all, but she's, you know, she can hold it as she's, she's like... She looks actually, you know what? She looks almost... You're close enough that she's, it's like you see this barely suppressed murderous rage actually directed at this individual. And she looks up. Lady Dara. I think that is where we're going to take a break. Um, we will be back in just a few moments as this whole thing unfolds. See you soon.
Well, we have returned, and uh, now there are a few things to sort out. Um, and uh, I think I'm going to... We're going to move around uh, back to the... Uh, Back to that shadow with, uh, you know, that's that's kind of yeah, you know, the shadow with the river, um, and the houses. This, um, and uh, Zena will be returning shortly as uh, this is going on. I'll let you know when you pop back in, um, because I assume again you're heading back to the same place after you dispose of that boat. Okay. Um, so you sort of asked. Um, this this gentleman, and there, uh, he says, we're putting up quite a bit of a quite a bit of a racket. I saw there was uh, some fight. I saw there was fighting going on. Folks are putting out trying to put out a fire. Um, care to tell me what's going on? Not particularly. Hmm. See, I kind of take care of this area if I can, and um, when people bring trouble around, it is not something that I appreciate. Or at least I try to take care of this area. It looks like, but I've got a lot of areas to take care of, so it looks like I was, uh, admittedly. Not ready for this one. Uh, that's why I'd like to know what's going on. Well, there were dragons, and there were ships, and now there are less ships, and if you give me a few minutes, there will be less dragons. I'll take a few of them off your hands, and then I think we're done. So, you can get back to taking care of things, because you clearly were doing a very good job. Yeah. Sorry about your boulder. Boulder's fine. I would just like to know why. And if I need to... I really don't want to wipe this place out and start over. But I just kind of need to know if I need to do that, because I presume that shadows need to be to stay stable here. And it'll be a lot, a lot easier for everybody, if I have that information. So, and uh, he's going to explain this while um, sloshing around his drink a little bit. And uh, the uh, vampire's forearm slash hand um, is in his other hand. So he's sort of making gestures with it as he's explaining. So I wasn't really paying attention as to why we are here or why uh, there are dragons and those weird dark stormy cloud thingies. Um, and then this vampire. Um, like some really smelly wizard just sort of disappeared um, in a panic. I assume he's trying to do something. Um, uh, listen, I'm just kind of here. I know that. To uh, make a living. So yeah. I don't know what to really tell you. Yes, um, unfortunately, you happen to have found yourselves with the two individuals who are perhaps not the ones you wish to talk to. I'm kind of getting that impression. Okay, so who should I talk to? And at that moment, Xena reappears. <laughs> well, you could talk oh. to that one. Yeah, she, she's more invested than we are. Um, uh, ig ignore the horns. I mean, I think it looks up, makes it look beautiful, but... Sort of it... looks... Please tell me this isn't chaos invading again. No, no, not... And we're sort of stopped the chaotic, chaotic invasion. 
I, I mean, it's been a few centuries now, and I kind of thought we were, well, not okay, but at the very least, Balanced? everyone got too tired to try to keep coming. I'm going to presume I... that's no longer the case. Nope. That is apparently no longer the case. Yeah. I was trying to... Yeah. As you are looking at him, and uh, it's it's for those of you who have been here for a minute, you kind of pick on the pick up on this a little bit. Zena's going to pick up on this kind of immediately. This guy actually looks kind of similar to Merlin. May I ask your name, my lord? Uh, that's opening up a lot of problems, possibly. Uh, call me Cory. Yeah, I'm going to give him my full House of Chaos title, along with Student of Merlin. Oh, okay. You're, oh, you're one of his students. Okay. All right. I have not actually heard from Merlin in a very long time, but he's been kind of busy. Um, you like to talk to him. I have his trunk. I mean, wait, I mean, so do I, but um, it's it's kind of a thing where, you know, we can't really talk to each other directly very much right now because a lot of crap that's going on, um, or that has been going on for you know, a better part of a century now. Um, and uh, I have really devices that, that do not require anyway. the pattern to for communication if you would like. You know, he did send a message about... You're that student. Okay. All right. Yeah, I think I have heard of you. Great. Okay. Mm. So, I'm going to presume he's part of the reason why you're here. Yes. What kind of trouble is the kid in now? Um, I believe he is currently trying to handle the duties of your grandfather. Yeah, you figured out who this is pretty quickly. Um, <laughs> and uh, he's like, he looks, <laughs> yeah, yeah, he sort of looks up. Oh God. Yeah. Yeah. No, that no, that makes sense. No, well, no, I mean, I I I knew when he was getting ready to start doing that, but that's. Damn it! Is he not out of that damn tower uh, yet? Uh, okay. Um, okay. Yeah, that's. How. Damned long does it... Okay, I guess it takes a while to balance the universe. Uh, that's kind of hellish, though. All right. Uh, okay. Yeah, it's all this... It, it's it's problem. You know, you get you get deep enough and the, just the layers just don't stop. It's all just a big chess game underneath another big chess game. Underneath probably a game of checkers, underneath a game of backgammon, and it's just ridiculous, but, you know... It's uh, it's the job, I guess. Okay. So, what has he said needs to happen here now? Well, there's a lot of there's a lot of complications happening. Why am I, I believe, not surprised? I believe you that your ex may have been here. Oh shit. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. That that would that explains though. Yeah. That's why I was. Hmm. All and right. your ex was. Probably made it here. It's connected to the ones who brought the dragons with the ships, and All we were right, just I'm trying to the stop them from. I am getting the picture. This is a problem. I think I know exactly what she's getting at. <coughs> oh, hell. Is there. Okay. Um, is this everybody? Is there anybody else that. There's one more. Had... There's a. the. Anderson. And he's he is Anderson. also Addison. Addison? Yeah, he's here too. Well he was. He disappeared to... among the battle. Okay, um so I'm going to start moving towards something that I think I know exactly where it is that Yeah. Uh hmm. Do you want us to follow you? Well you can come or you can come if you like. Uh but I, like uh, like I said earlier, it only gets deeper. And he kind of he throws off his this this robe, 
And you see more. He's got uh, he's got kind of a that he, he sort of flips it around. It's more now of a cloak, and he he sort of uh, fastens it with a a silver rose clasp. Um. And he says, "All right. Well, luckily, it's not going to be a very it's not going to be a very long hell run." But if you can keep up, you're more than welcome to come. Lady Charlotte, would you like a ride? Well, you know, I'm torn because selfishly, I would just like to take my dragons and go because that's all I really am here for. But that seems very anticlimactic and I do <laughs> love a climactic ending to a dramatic story. So, yes, if I'll take a ride. Like. If you like, afterwards, I will bring you back and we will take the dragons back to your opera house. Do you? Yeah, I mean, I'd, I'd appreciate it if you do something with them because I, uh, around, oh. I mean, I don't, I don't live here, but it, I, you know, these folks are, will probably be cursing my name for even longer now if, uh, if, if we leave them just to. Don't worry, the, the purple and the red one will go with me. The yellow one is a bit not my particular taste, so. All right, now yeah, we'll figure something out. Appre eh, appreciate it. Um, <clears throat> and he uh, he starts to. So he, he, and he turns. Um, he, he kind of stops for a second. And he glances back, looks Lady uh, Lady Charlotte up and down. He's like, "Are you from that moon?" Why, yes, I am. I am the proprietor and mistress of that moon. Huh. And, and you're still on opposite sides of the river right now, so it's uh, it's, it's it's one of those who's like... Yeah, I slipped in for that. Uh, I, I slipped in for that. There was... Uh... There was a thing... Well, it was kind of like... It reminded me of La Giaconda. Um, it was really good. Why, thank you. You folks do a good job over there. Okay. Um, here, I can... Uh, so there's a bridge over there. I'm going to get. I'm gonna cross there, and then I'm going to start shifting. And uh, <coughs> he turns, and he starts walking toward the bridge. I will offer my arm to Lady Charlotte to carry her, and um, I assume... You know, you, uh, you're riding your horse pony cloud thing? Uh, yeah, it, it goes everywhere with me, so. Yeah. He says, yeah. Nara is complicated. Um, so, this, we might not be in immediate danger, but we easily could be. It's a knife's edge. You never know with her. He starts shifting, and then we're we're going to shift over. And uh, as you folks have kind of gotten closer, you see this mist. Through this mist, you can see this. Uh, 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 sorry, Addison. You see, uh, as you've gotten closer to um, this picnic table, you can see through the mist beyond this tree. You can see what it is that is glowing. The thing that is glowing appears to be a pattern. Oh. It keeps getting worse. Oh. And just like, I can feel like the hatred radiating off of rumor. But rumor is not focusing on the pattern. They're focusing on immediate problems. But that, that's an issue. That's an issue I'm going to have to deal with. Well, while Dara's here. Mm. Okay, picnic time. <laughs> Yeah. Will you sit? Yes, thank you. And uh, Rumor just says, 
I will stand, thank you, my lady. Hmm. Are you still holding a grudge? That was so long ago. Just at, at, at that sentence, I, I like to think that Addison is but is just lowering hits seat and then the mention of grudges and it's just the I am the worst wizard. <laughs> um, and uh, she comes uh, comes up. Hmm. Uh, feel free to continue standing if you like. I, uh, I have no interest in you right now. And she turns to Addison. Now, she says, and she's picking up a, a bit of bread and she's putting jam on it. I think perhaps uh, we indeed got off on the wrong foot. And uh, I thought perhaps I would just tell you what it is that I'm doing. And I think I see where you might uh, find it to your advantage as well. Because I take it you are not here by choice, entirely. I'm here because the family realized that the family was doing something nefarious, and as I cared not for thrones or strategies, I just like wandering through my swamps. I'm the most trustworthy right now. Hmm. Funny isn't it how when such convenient offspring are around for some such convenient family members are around that few ask what it is that they want so i shall ask you directly addison what is it that you want I want a lot of things, but there's... Sure. This is all going to end poorly anyway, so I might as well just put all the cards at the table. <sighs> I, like many of the family, I've, are a very simple creature. I want revenge. Hmm. How exciting. On whom? The person who murdered my mother. Ah. Your granddaughter. Yes. That was unfortunate what happened to Cassandra. I had hoped that she would have turned out to have greater potential than she did, but eh, things happened. Unfortunate things. Well, I do know who did it. I can hand him to you. Uh, quite easily. I, my understanding is uh, he's... Yeah, hmm, yes, he's not, uh, he's not really in much of a position to defend himself at the moment. Oh, not much of one. If that is what you want, I can... I can provide it. I merely need just one little thing from you. What's that? Some of your blood. And then look to her, but also like kind of like looking through and past her. Yeah. <laughs> this pattern glowing on the ground behind her. <laughs> I'm... I understand. Mm. But here's the problem. I'm not whose blood you need. You have the appropriate uh, 
No, you have that blood in you. Granted, it is somewhat diluted, but um, it's It's there. not the dilution that's the problem. I am not actually acting as your enemy here. That's the funny thing. You don't want mine. I will have unintended consequences. I see your plan. I understand it. But mine... Mine will cause something that not even points to her head. Your old friend has truly looked forward to see. You need someone who hasn't fucked up. I think rather that there is more within you than you realize. I'm just lucky. Uh. I'm not. Yes, I am your I am Corwin's great-grandson. That is true. But you would need his or Merlin's blood, really, to do what you want to do. That has uh, been a thing that has been bandied about in the past, attempted even in the past. I'm rather counting on, well your peculiarities to assist somewhat in the balancing of things with this. See, there's a certain... Huh. Huh. In fact, I think I shall show you a little bit. All you need to do is just think, is there... So that's, that's probably not something, I don't know if you'd be evil, even able to necessarily perceive it directly, but have you noticed an unusual feeling about this place? Obvious things aside, she says, gesturing to the pattern. <laughs> it feels familiar. Hmm. You understand the building blocks of this place in a way that very few do. Yeah, on an inherent level. And to be honest, there is a certain reshaping and accounting for things that needs to happen. Uh, if I were to just go and have Corwin or Merlin bleed on this pattern, then, well, in the case of the former, I'd be all too happy to do it, but uh, in the case of the latter, it's, mm, he's not on the table, but either way, it would simply mar a portion of it and then cause uh, well, then a certain rebalancing of things in shadows. Things would go rather mm, very poorly for rather a lot of the shadows around here. Things would fall apart. Your blood, however, contains something that's a little bit different, as did your mother's. There is the potential to reshape and control things as we go using it. You do understand, do you not? Did he not tell you? Did, did my son not tell you? Did he keep you in the dark? Grandfather hasn't been the most 
loving of parents or family members. I should really talk to him again about that. Our conversations when we have these go round and round, but he should understand, he understands the, he took these lessons of family being first in rather an un unfortunate ways when he was younger. It is important, but there are applications. I will tell you. The reason you understand and feel this place in the way that you do is because, in a sense, part of you was present when it was made. Do you know who your grandmother is? No. Your grandmother's name is Coral. Uh, she is... Hmm. Uh, was, uh, from what I understand, uh, did not realize for some time that she was of the uh, Royal House of Amber until... No, no. Uh, a, uh, a certain uh, series of circumstances fell upon each other, and uh, she then had uh, a particular item uh, with you know, transplanted into her by another ancestor of yours. Uh, have you ever heard of the Eye of Chaos? Uh, yeah. yeah, I have. Indeed. On uh, your end of things, you call it the Jewel of Judgment. And there is a part of it in you. Because there was a part of it in your mother. Now, it always goes back to those two, doesn't it? <laughs> uh, would that it were not the case. But this, at the very least, might be a way of restoring an even greater equilibrium. This, I think, you realize the difficulties and travails of having a this, this this road connecting the two ends of things. It is messy in a way that I don't think you appreciate, or rather, I don't think that appreciates you. While she's doing this, I'm going to, because I am sneaky enough, slide one of my trumps out from under my sleeve, take the juice of something rotting, and then on my side, over in that juice, write very small and very quickly, hurried, and just as it's punctuated, puck. Okay. And then just put my hand on the trump. <laughs> Because I've been stalling for time and no help is coming. <laughs> so, well, this is interesting. She, uh, she looks... I think at this point... Um, Dara comes up and she... And she is about to lock eyes with you. As you are, as you touch and pull out the trump. And at this point, Rumor, who has been sort of standing right next to you, and you've probably not been paying attention to what she's been doing. Nope. But she, uh, at this point, she chooses this point to throw a dagger. Now, let me take a quick look at something. Oh, yes, yes. 
da, da, no, that's no contest. Uh, Dara catches the dagger. And she says, <laughs> Oh. Oh, no, 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 my dear, my dear. She stands up slowly. That's not how you do that at all. You do it like this. And she hurls the dagger back at Rumor. And, uh... With that, my eyes... Very quickly. And you've managed to write out the message now. <laughs> yeah. My eyes down, my hand on the card. I... This is going to hurt me a lot. But I think I'm fast enough. I'm going to give her what she wants in a way. And the dagger goes through my hand. Oh! <laughs> it is only because she is a little distracted that I think you... Uh, you it goes <laughs> past it. It doesn't go right through it. Yeah. You do manage to get a little bit of a cut on it. It does stray. It still gets her in the side. <laughs> But she's, uh, she's not as injured as she would have been. <laughs> um, and Dara just looks at you. And <laughs> oh, that is... Oh, that is good. <laughs> I didn't imagine you might, like th you might like this one. I mean, no one back home likes her. I am my mother's son. So it would seem. And as the blood is starting to drip, she is, leans forward and says, and she actually just, she picks up one of the empty wine glasses on the table and, says, and just, just sort of looks at you and moves the wine glass to be under your hand, which depends on if you're going to Leave it there, and she's kind of. I, I, I'm, I'm holding it still because oh, does it hurt? Um, but with that, I'm going to make the gesture like I'm going to put it over the glass. Again, hands on the trump, mm -hmm. and then quicker than she thinks. Just as I'm doing this, I'm going to produce just one of the broken tendrils. And with that little bit of ephemeral effort, push my hand onto the other hand, touching the trump with the blood and with the tendril. And just send out psychically with that tendril. I know you're looking, you son of a bitch. Get here. Okay. So, someone does get there. A um, couple of things happen. <laughs> As this goes on, um, so she uh, she stands up um, as this happens, and you know you're pulling up broken pattern. There's this flash, um, and the uh, so Zena, Lanada, and Charlotte. You will arrive following uh, this this gentleman uh, onto this scene. It is an area. It's not actually that swamp like. It's this flat plain uh, with a with a tree. There are a few trees around. You see a picnic table, and you see uh, there's a bit of mist, but just under it, you see what looks like a uh, a fiery pattern in uh, sort of a. a of uh, inscribed in blue flame, uh, not like lapping flame, but just sort of slow burning flame, across this rocky surface, this flat surface next to this tree, um, inscribed in the ground. Um, you see, you see Addison, who is like grappling with this uh, this woman. You see Rumor, who is grabbing her side. And of 
Corwin unsheathes his blade, steps forward, and says, Well, it's nice to see you again, but I feel as though the circumstances are such that you're really not welcome here. And you see the pattern to her left starts flaring up. <laughs> And, so uh, lots of drama. Yeah, Dara is a little distracted right now with what's going on with uh, with Addison. And Addison, you hear almost echoing the sort of this. It's like half a voice. It's coming, coming and going. It's like that's sort of coming through this long tunnel as you've tried to open this tendril that's that's sort of coming in on one. It's hard to make out really exactly what it's what it's trying to say. But it's as though there's a struggle going on on the other end. Yeah, but I, I, as I'm hearing this just psychically louder through the card, through the mm -hmm. blood, through the pain. Yeah. Just it all ends here. Get here, Puck. Get here, you son of a bitch. Can I ask whose card you're using? My own. Okay. Just checking. Interesting. Okay. So, this is a point at which Dara is going to is going to twist out of your uh, out of your grasp. And she looks up, and uh, she says, well, I suppose we'll have to do this the hard way. And she, st she gestures, and you hear, uh, you hear, a, you, you, you hear, a, uh, you hear her speak quietly a word. And at this point, it appears it's as though you've got a cyclone coming at you, basically, with the uh, the amount of wind that's uh, that's now coming through the uh, that's coming through here. It is very difficult to stand. Good thing I'm seated. Yes, it is. <laughs> and Corwin is trying to come around. He's sort of slowly stepping, moving inch by inch closer. He says, "Can I yeah, kind of he, like?" Digging with my talons and pull him closer. Yeah, you're sort of working on it. So I'm digging with your talons before he says, and Corwin says, "It's I'll get to her. Get Addison out of there." Okay, can I use a tendril to grab Addison and just yank him and myself the quickest way possible? Sorry about this. Uh, to another shadow. Uh, you can, uh, yeah, you can, you can do that. It it's going to take you a moment as you're, you're pulling everything up and trying to fight against the wind to move forward. Uh, I'm going to go around again. What is, uh, what is Lenata doing? So Lenata's watching the struggle with keen interest. Um, I suppose oh God, you're on a cloud. You're in trouble. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, so, um, I guess he's just going to have to actually... Um, reluctantly dismount from the cloud and, uh, you know, temporarily banish it back to its uh, own shadow. Yeah, it's like... <laughs> and so, um, he's going to just use his uh, spear, I guess, as a sort of walking stick to anchor himself onto the ground as he crawls forward towards the um, the markings, I guess. Excellent. And, uh, but he's just going to look at it. Uh, he, he's not really paying much attention to the struggle, but he's also got the um, that dismembered hand still. Um, and just for giggles, I guess, he's just going to toss the hand uh, onto the sigil. Okay. I'll let you know what happens in a moment, but the wind is going to pick up even more when you do that. Charlotte, what are you doing? 
this woman is clearly the one casting this, right? Doing the, what's yes. causing this? Yes, yes she is. <sighs> well, there can only be one prima donna, so it's going to be me, and I'm going to replicate a shadow object right next to her, and I'm going to replicate that red dragon that I've proved I'm better than, and it is going to eat her if it can. Okay. So, um, Replicate Shadow Object is one of your spells, yes? Yes, it is. Excellent. Okay. So, you are casting this. It's only going to take a second. It's just a linchpin. Um, Xena, you are reaching for... Uh, you are reaching for Addison. Uh, you've got hold of his legs. Addison, someone's got hold of your legs. Um, <laughs> and this, uh, as you're slowly, as you're, you're getting, you're starting to get yanked. You see this this large figure forming to the side, <laughs> out of shadow stuff, and it's. It is very difficult to work with shadow stuff here, Charlotte. You're finding, so it is... You, you cast the spell. It's taking you a moment to make this thing manifest. This cloud is pulling together. And uh, then another small little funnel appears above the edge of the pattern where Lenata threw the hand. And it's starting to descend, this orangish funnel. And... Addison, you immediately feel that as though there's like when when the when that when that funnel starts descending, it's like it's like an extra octave or something is that you're you're connected to it in some strange way, um, and you can kind of hear it in your head. <laughs> so. However, it is actually very close to this, uh, you know, it's right at the beginning. So sort of wobbling, moving down. Um, Dara now has a destructive pattern funnel on one side of her. She now has a red dragon that's now forming and, and chomping at her. And Corwin is almost to the picnic table. <laughs> Would anyone like to... And you've got a moment if anyone else wants to try to do anything. As she's... As she's... Uh, she, she's bearing her teeth. And you can see her form rippling a little bit. And horns are starting to sprout. How far away is she from me? Uh, right now you're just across the table from her. Uh, she's, she took a step away from the table. So it's a little further than it was. Like a yard. Seeing how bad everything's going. And she's distracted. And I am Corwin's great grandson. I'm going to take the hurt hand, immediately shove it into her mouth, grab her since she has her mouth open, grab, I don't care how, she can take my fingers, I don't care and then just wrench her down onto the table. Okay, you do manage to, uh, you know, she is distracted. You grab her, yank her down onto the table. Uh, she's going to get one finger. Yep. Worth it! She slams down. She's like, ah! Dragon is now coming in to, 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 uh, to, to bite as this, this red dragon has formed and is like, ah! As you're sort of right next to her, sort of tears at her as a wing. She tear, it reaches down, tears off a wing that sprouts out of her back, and tears it away from her. And she cries out. Dara cries out as she's splayed across the table. Ah! <sighs> and she raises a hand, and she looks at something in her in her sleeve. As she she sort of tumbles down. And she vanishes. 
she very quickly goes to two-dimensional and uh, trumps out. Well, who was and that? Now, there is still a storm raging and a dragon here. And, uh... That's right. You can hear uh, you can hear Dara's voice actually now that it begins to carry through this uh, this clearing as she's speaking from somewhere. It's hard to say where. Maybe she left a spell here. It's hard to say, but it rings out. This place will be destroyed one way or another, and. I thank you for providing me a line to it. And... You can see now that there's a... Uh, sort of beyond where the, where the conjured dragon is that you just, you just created. And there's a lot of this sort of... Uh, as this the storm is is going on, you see another sort of vortex starting to appear. As it seems that uh, maybe she's summoning a shadow storm of some kind. It's hard to say. And it is more or less at this point. Zena, you have Addison. He has appeared in your hands. And uh, there's sort of this whirlwind going around. And... It's more or less at this point that this golden hoop appears. Just sort of skyrocketing down as this, this rift is opening up. launches forward and each in turn will come around each of you go over top of each of you and you will find that you are elsewhere where are we? that's an excellent question and is corn here with us? yeah um <laughs> So, I think that, uh, hmm, where shall we, where shall we deposit you? Well, there's one place that it knows, that, uh, that, that he knows to go that's relatively safe. Um, you're standing by a large kind of, a big sort of, uh, a big rocky outcropping of what looks like a sort of blue crystal. And it looks like there's like a... Uh, there's a ladder actually going up it and uh, next to it. Um, and you see it's, it's the four of you and Corwin are standing there. And this little golden disc appears in front of you. It's a, and it says, I'm sorry I had to snatch you like that, but <laughs> uh, that was not a safe place. This is going to be a relatively safer place as it's f far enough away. Looking around hurriedly, where's Rumor? And uh, that's an, that is also an, a further excellent question. And uh, it says, she wasn't there. Uh, there wasn't anyone else right there. She, and actually, yes, yeah, so last you saw, rumor had uh, rumor had hit the ground when the when the gale started, and she was seemed to be clawing her way around the table.
I'm not sure. She might have trumped out. I can look for her. Uh, and uh, Corwin immediately, he, he's resheathing his blade. He says, I need you to take me back. That place is not going to be safe. And actually, you folks notice as, as this talking is going on that this, this disc has Merlin's voice for whatever reason. Um, and he says, Damn it, ghost or puck or whatever the hell you're calling yourself now. You know I need to get back there. And and deal and deal with it. You know that when I'm on the pattern it'll be I'll be safe. So just drop me on it if you need to. I'll walk the damn thing and get to the middle if you can't get to the middle. It's like Oh, I see what you mean. Exactly. I have to put I have to put this back. Oh. So you're going to need the... Yes, I'm going to need it. Okay. Uh, and and uh, at this point, Puck will hover for a moment, he says, and says, so we're going to try to do something to stop what's about to happen. Inside that cave is probably going to be relatively safe, but, uh, you know... We'll see what's going on. If you uh, need anything, I'll be back in a few minutes. It descends over Corwin. And he vanishes. What are the four of you doing? Oh! Fuck! I, that looks like it hurts. Yep. I just had a finger chopped off by my great grandmother by shoving my hand into her mouth as she was becoming a demon. I think I pulled a first amongst the family. Oh, fuck. Uh, can I use Lugris to pull in some medical supplies? You may. I would like to do that. Um, shape-shifting like I do, do I have enough anatomy understanding to be able to patch up? Um, yeah, um, you actually, yeah, you understand kind of the basics here. Um. It's not a form I'm unfamiliar with, so. Yeah, yeah. This is gonna hurt. Uh, it, it, it already is. Just go for it. <laughs> Cauterize it? What are you, what are we going with here? Yeah, yeah. Can let's... I use Quell to put Addison to sleep for this? You might want to ask him if he wants to be his teammate. Addison, would you like to not feel this? Oh, no. I, I have to tell the family every single excruciating thing that happened. I'm not going to deprive them of the memories I'm going to give them all. <laughs> well, regardless of your tough guy bravado, this is very much going to hurt. Would you like it to hurt less? No, 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 no. It, you, right. You don't, hmm, you don't, no. Hmm, no, no. Power from paint. Power all right, I offered. Oh my god. <laughs> Oh, it seems everybody are losing limbs today. I have all of mine. <laughs> Those... Well, considering who you are, you have yours plus some. Now let's get this over with. All right. I will patch him up. Just horrific screaming. Like tears streaming down his face. He is just an ugly mess. Can I... Can I shift my ears so that I don't have to hear the screaming? Oh yeah, you can you can deafen yourself if you want. <laughs> yeah, There's a lot of screaming going on right I now. You have to throw a couple extra arms to like hold him down. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean if I need a couple extra arms, that's fine. I'll hold him yeah. down. So while this uh, cheer archery is going on, uh, <laughs> of a sort. Um,
Uh, Charlotte and Leonardo, what are you doing? Walking as far away from that as I can so I don't have to listen to it. All right. Uh, so Lenata is actually looking around, um, for something to drink. Okay. His buzz, his buzz is wearing off, and, uh, you know, if he's going to keep fighting shape, he's got to, uh, yeah. So immediately, sur immediate surroundings are there's forest. Um, there's just forest, and then there's this big uh, blue crystal. Um, looks like a natural structure, but it's, again, someone has put a ladder up against it. Oh, well. All right. Uh, he, he is just going to um, holster his spear and uh, make his way over to um, that ladder and then uh, do a little exploring. So, do you climb up the ladder? He does, okay. but, uh, yeah. So you're climbing up the ladder. At the top of it, you see there's a, uh, there's what looks like an entrance into a cave um, in these rocks. As you get to the top of the ladder, though, you feel this sensation that I don't think you you have probably ever felt before. Um, it's this very cold feeling for a moment at the back of your mind. It's kind of like, it's kind of like someone turned on an air conditioner inside your head for a second and you kind of can hear it and feel it. It's like there's this gust of wind blowing across your mind. Um, and it's this feeling that someone is trying to contact you. You know, they're usually, I, I usually drink to uh, deal with other voices in my head. Um, I admit I don't have uh, anything here right now to drown you out. So let's just uh, get this conversation over with so I can go find my drink. Hey. And you hear this voice and says, oh, hey, buddy, hey, hey, you need a hand? Um, oh, you're there. Okay, yeah, there's there's plenty of drinks in there. Hang on just a second. Um, and you see, for and there's this vision that happens to you. And you see the guy in the domino mask. <laughs> um, who, who you watched fight. A little while ago. Oh, hey! I know you! Huh. Oh, yeah, I... I put, mo I, I put money on you, and the guy ran off with my money. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that sucked, didn't it? Uh, listen, um... I... I have to say that uh, there was kind of, and you, you can't quite see where he is. He's front of, is standing in front of like a blank wall. Um, and uh, as he sort of look, looks up, he says, and he's take, he takes his mask off. Um, and uh, his face looks slightly familiar, but it's not really, it's not really ringing. Actually, he, he looks familiar to you. Uh, Lenata, you look like, it looks like somebody you've seen before. Um, um, he actually looks, now that you're thinking about it and you hear, and after a moment you hear him talk, he, you think, was at the temple at one point. Um, and he Barry? Has, he has, and he, <laughs> he says, he says, <laughs> uh, yeah, that's the name I gave you, wasn't it? <laughs> And is is, is, is he looks down? Uh, no, no. Um, uh, you can call me Luke. Guy Walker. Interesting parallels there. Not quite. Um, listen. Uh, so there's kind of a. I I, I kind of see where where you are right now. Um, I'm, I'm very familiar with that place. 
Would you mind if I come through and talk to you and anyone else who may be around you for a little bit, yeah? I mean, I guess I don't see the harm in that. Excellent. And he reaches his hand forward and he says, hey, just, uh, just take my hand. I know it can be uh, really weird seeing this for the first time, um, but if you take my hand, I'll be right there. Uh, Lanata thinks about it for a moment. And, uh, his need for a drink probably outweighs any sort of uh, real danger sense at this point. So he's just going to reach out his hand and uh, help the guy through. Okay. So... He's now standing next to you. Um, I'm going to say Addison and Zena are too uh, absorbed in the in, in what's going on to uh, to notice this. Uh, Charlotte will notice that uh, a kind of a tall man with uh, sort of lighter red hair is now standing on top of this 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 cave with Lenata um, as someone who just trumped in. Apparently, he says, <laughs> oh, "It's good to see you." Um, yeah, so, and he turns and he looks down he, and he says, oh my God. And he looks, he sees Charlotte. Yeah. And he sort of uh, reaches over and claps Lenata on the shoulder. He says, um, thanks, man. Um, there's a little, uh, there's an ice box down there. Uh, you go down two lefts and a right. And there's an ice box there. It's got uh, it's got beer, and I think I put some sangria in there. Um, so it's got that and some Guinness and um, a few other things. Um, if you want to kind of if you want to kind of hunt through, feel free. And he turns, and he starts, and he just sort of looks down at Charlotte and sort of nods. He says, and nods. He says. Can you hang out there for just a second? I'll come down to you. And he starts descending the ladder. So Lenon is going to shrug and follow the man's directions to uh, refresh his vittles. Yeah, you go in and it's, uh, yeah, it's like there's some, there are living facilities kind of in here. It's not... It's not anything, you know, they're, they're, so, so they're like, you, you coming through here, you see, you notice a bedroom. There's like a thing that's not unlike a bathroom here. Um, and you find the larder. Um, and uh, there's, there, as he said, there is an icebox with a number of different beers in it. All right, cool. Um, is it a portable icebox? Uh, this one's kind of big. I mean, yeah, you could pick it up and carry it. It's kind of like, it's a nice chest type thing, so you could... Do that. Um, he's just going to shrug, and he's just going to throw the whole thing onto his shoulder and uh, walk back out with it. <laughs> okay. Um, this guy's going to come down the ladder. He's going to turn. He's like, so I know this is going to be kind of awkward, but we're actually related, he says to Charlotte. Really? Yeah, and I saw everything that was going on, and I wanted to make sure you were okay. And it looks like uh, you got deposited here, I'm assuming, by uh, mm, Puck, right? Does this person look familiar? Uh, he has a... I would like to ask if your mother ever showed you pictures of any of anyone. Probably not. I mean, they really tried to separate themselves from where they came from because they wanted to not be torn back into that that life. So I don't, I don't think they would have. He, yeah, there is something that looks familiar about him. Um, he does have a look about him that's that actually looks very familiar to you. But you have not met this person. And I don't think you've seen this person before. Um, to the extent of my knowledge, I don't have any relatives with red hair, so... Ah, that did not get carried down. 
Um, it is a recessive gene, after all. Yeah, well, no, you're... Um, true. And also, um, your, your grandmother had some rather really interesting DNA. Um, so... Yeah. Mm. Uh, well, as like you can that. see, I'm fine. Yeah, that's I good. I faced down a red dragon and uh, now have it as a pet. So I, I can I can handle myself. Am I going to get an introduction or are you going to stay mysterious relative of the unknown? My apologies. And he, he, he bows deeply. My apologies, my lady. Lucas Reynard, at your service. Fuck! <laughs> I knew all, I was like, as soon as you said Luke with red hair, I'm like, oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, ha, oh, ha. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> he sort of looks over. He's in a lot of pain right now. Yes, good. no, it's a, it's a very stubborn man over there dealing with what he deserves because he's too stubborn to accept help. Um, Lucas, very nice to meet you, Charlotte. Pleasure. Pleasure, it really is. Uh, um, I, uh... See, folks back home aren't incredibly fond of me. I make things kind of difficult for them sometimes. Um, I can't so, imagine. Yeah, I know, right? Uh, but I really wanted to make sure that you could be kept away from all that. Once I saw everything, all the crap that was going on and everything that Merle was doing, I kind of wanted to make sure that you're kept safe, if nothing else. Um... Because right now from what I kind of just peeked over and I understand that Merle's dad is doing something really dangerous and stupid to try to uh, kind of keep all the shadows together. I did wonder, however, uh, this is a good place uh, for folks who want to need to a place to hide and you're w more than welcome to use it if you need to. Um, but I mean, it's kind of. I mean, kind of. If you look at it a certain way, it's kind of part yours anyway. Um, I should be explicit here. I've just not been in this situation before, so it's hard to know how much is good to tell you. I'll just tell you, um, as you probably have gathered by this point from our previous utterances in this conversation, I am your grandfather. Say something. Motherfucker! <laughs> <laughs> Is that Merlin's grandson? You know, I never actually learned his name. Um, my grandfather? Yes. But you and I don't look anything alike. <laughs> I know. <laughs> Which is kind of nuts, but it happens. Well, like you said, recessive genes and all. Um, but he does actually look kind of like your mother. <laughs> right. Well. Congratulations. You got a fantastic granddaughter. Good for you. I know. I, I, I could not be more pleased. Uh, thing being, I, 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 I just... Well, you know, at times like this, you kind of just want to make sure that, you know, when the universe is kind of falling apart, you want to make sure that the things that are kept together are kept together. So all I really wanted to do was just ask. I know that that moon means a lot to you. It has to. But... If Corwin can't pull off what he's trying to pull off right now, and things do split apart, it is not going to be safe.
Would you be willing to stay here until the th until this blows over? Of course not. It's opening night this weekend. That's what I was worried about. Fun thing I should mention. Uh, 30 days here is one day in amber. Right, well then I need to get back. One, first off. Two, the universe will always be pulled apart and put back together. That's the nature of the universe, and I'm not too worried about it. Three, I have a show to do. And as we say in the theater, the show must go on. So grandfather or no grandfather, I'm not staying in a cave. <laughs> oh my god. This is wonderful. This is like... This is like... This is like having an argument with myself right after I got out of business school. This is so beautiful. Okay. All right. Okay. All right. Oh, I'm sure you can handle yourself, but I'm just going to make an offer here. There's stuff you've got to learn about how shadow works and dealing with it. Will you accept my help with that if we live through the next day or so? Day here or day there? Because day again, there. opening night. Yeah, opening. If we live past opening night. Well, that's always a risk. Fair. Fine. I will accept help. But I will make one, one very clear condition. If I may. Go ahead. You've got leverage in this situation. Use it. My parents left for a reason. Your yeah. two sides, your amber and your chaos, are what are tearing the universe apart over yeah. and over again. Yeah. They chose to leave, and I believe they made the right choice. So I will accept your help, but I will not choose a side. I am remaining completely neutral. This universe needs someone to be the balance. You know, my best friend used to talk the way that you do. They swayed him in the end. Well, he kind of got strong-armed in the end. And, you know, he and I used to run around trying to do the same thing for a very long time. Um, maybe this is the age where you just do that. Okay. Okay. I am absolutely fine with that. Couldn't be more pleased, actually. Good. Also, you'll help me learn to tame my dragons, because I have acquired two dragons now, and uh, they will need food and those sorts of things, and I'm just going to put that on you, because you seem to be involved in all of this. Well, uh, let me uh, let me think about that. I think I may have a counteroffer coming up for you that uh, that you might find uh, equally attractive that involves the, ma the management of the dragons. We'll deal with the details, though, in a, in a little bit. Uh, <laughs> I cannot say... And at this point, Lanata is emerging from the cave. And I think at this point, uh, at this point, Addison's been fairly patched up. So it hurts, but you're, 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 you're going to be okay. Um, and Luke is just sort of looking up. You have no idea uh, what I, what I had to do in trying to sort of lure out and following that guy. He says, gesturing to Lanata. <laughs> To, to so uh, Lenana is not going to be yeah. paying attention. He's just going to um, summon uh, Fluffy and uh, plant plant the uh, chest on Fluffy and uh, settle back in uh, on top of his mount and uh, just start uh, drinking one of the beers from the case. Oh, and, no. he'll just, and he'll just float down back to where everybody is. Okay. Lenata, did you find alcohol? I did. Excuse me, Grandfather. This is more important. Oh, sure. Yeah, mostly beer in there. Um, there's some, uh, there's some vodka. There's some whiskey. Uh, I've got wine. I've got a wine rack, but it's in the, uh, it's in the cave. Oh, Lana, wine. beer me, please. <laughs> um, so uh, Lenata is going to actually uh, reach into the case, rummaging around a bit, and uh, yeah, he'll fling the beer um, straight at. Uh, I know wine is a very proper lady drink. Vodka, please. <laughs> <laughs> oh, 
Okay, if there's not vodka in the beer case, I will reach out and grab some and bring back a good bottle yeah. for it. There, there, there is there is some vodka in the in the case. Okay. Um. And Luke is saying, "Yeah, I'm sorry. I kind of had to." And he says, sort of to Lenata, "Yeah, buddy, I'm sorry. I kind of had to." Uh, do a bit of a distraction to keep you in that part of town to make sure that the chain of events happened so I could so I could kind of I know it's kind of ass to elbow but I figured that things would converge and you'd uh, yeah and, and uh, you would be together well at least you'd find her since she's kind of the, the center of things um, so apologies for that um, but Excellent, and uh, he he just sort of nods to Charlotte, and he will take out a he will take out a playing card, and he will he will he will try to hand it to Charlotte. Um, can I go to human form? But I'm going to keep the horns since Lady, Lady Charlotte seems to like them. But otherwise, go human, just since sure. we all seem to be human form now. Yeah. Charlotte, if you accept the card, it's a it's a trump of him. Thank you. You're welcome. You're really welcome. So, Wait a second. So you're Addison, I, huh? <laughs> I know you. Six <laughs> two, red haired, ruggedly handsome, smarmy. Ah, oh, fuck! This day keeps getting worse. Yeah, your granddad tried to introduce you to me once or twice, but it never seemingly went through. You always fall to arguing before we got around to it. Ah. Uh, Right. Well, that's family for you. At least I still got this one. <laughs> yep. Yep. You're definitely. Uh, yeah, I definitely can see where where you're on in that family tree. <laughs> um, is uh, Lady of Chaos. Um. I would appreciate it if this place were kept kind of. The location of this place were kept kind of secret. I managed to do it for like the last millennium. It would kind of be helpful. I will keep that in mind. I have uh, I have more vodka where this came from, and also other things that I could probably tell you that might help you back home. I know a few things from the old days in chaos that kind of got passed down to me. That I would be more interested in than the vodka. Ah, okay. Careful, Xena, he's a charmer. That, sir, is one of, that, sir, is my best attribute. <laughs> we'll talk. But, uh, yeah. And uh, he sort of looks up, and you see sort of the sky. There's this sort of wave that passes through it, and he says, Well, you started. Hopefully it'll all come out all right. I think we'd better get into the cave for a little while, okay? All right. Do you have snacks in the cave? I have so many snacks in there. All right. I think I got something in the robe. <laughs> Pulls out an already, like, half-eaten apple. He just sort of shakes his head. I got a shower in there, too. You want to use it? I will take the half-eaten apple. I don't care. It's more worse than some of the other things I've eaten. And, uh... I already took a shower. I showered right before I saw my great-grandmother. Hobbles in. <laughs> and, uh... You, uh, you all enter the Crystal Cave, which is safe from most outside influences as the universe quietly tries to hold its shape. And uh, things are drawn in an effort to keep a primal area safe. Perhaps it succeeds, perhaps it doesn't, but our tale for now is at an end. For now. <laughs> Thank you all very much for playing. Uh, 
I very much appreciate it. Uh, I've uh, I, I really enjoy Amber. It's uh, basically always been kind of my favorite RPG uh, since uh, you know I started running it when uh, I was uh, in like late teens, early twenties, something like that. I can't remember exactly when it was, um, but it just kept blooming outward and outward and outward as more and more threads kept coming out in that initial one shot that turned into a multi year campaign. Uh, and uh, I had no idea that was going to happen, but it did, and it's uh, I just fell in love with it. And so thank you so much all of you, for letting me uh, play with it a little bit longer. I appreciate it. Well, we are at the, uh, we are indeed at the end here. So we're going to go around and uh, do our outros. And uh, feel free again to say, uh, you know, to plug anything you like, say where folks can find you. And your thoughts about uh, this session and this, or, or indeed this campaign. Any final thoughts on the campaign? And um, I'm going to, as, as is tradition, I will go reverse order from the way we started. And we shall begin with Anders. Hey, that's me. Um, I'm Anders. You can find me at Anders underscore D underscore K on the internets. Um, my plugs for today, because I actually have my life together. Um, Thursday, we're starting a little campaign over on Variant Rolls called American Werewolves in London. And uh, very excited to be a very big werewolf in, in Victorian London. That should be really good. And continuing on Sunday, also on Variant Rolls, playing Monster Heart, which is a mature game. Mature game. Um, but also very, very good. And there's werewolves in that too. And I just really like werewolves. Um, thoughts, favorite moments, those sorts of things. This tonight was very, very exciting. There were so many moments where things were happening and like in my head, I could see like the beautiful epic illustration of it. Like the comic sequence of Lenata's fight and, and the uh, um, staring down the dragon. I felt really badass. Um, I really liked arguing with Addison about <laughs> anesthetics. That was very enjoyable. Um, but yeah, I had a lot of fun tonight. This was really cool. Well, thank you so much for playing. Uh, thanks so much for playing, man. This was great. I really appreciate it. Uh, and uh, this, it was just really fun seeing uh, see, uh, uh, seeing Lady Charlotte. And just, I think it's got to be probably... I think one of my favorite one of my favorite moments tonight is just uh, Charlotte staring down the dragon. <laughs> so that was uh, that was glorious. I loved it. Um, and uh, Charlotte indeed has a dragon now. Uh, two, two. In her favorite colors: red and black, or red Great. and purple. Awesome, excellent. <laughs> well, there we go. It's, it's it comes out of it with 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 all the dragoning. And uh, let's now go to Anino. Hey, uh, my name's Anino. You can find me on Anino Gaming uh, on Twitter. I don't really have anything else going right now, uh, apart from our weekly Invisible Sun campaign, uh, which um, should be going on this Saturday um, at 8 o'clock on this channel. Um, whether it's a development session or not, a uh, or a regular session, uh, we'll find out. But uh, yeah, we have options um so like all of the other um like five mini campaigns i've now done on uh jim's channel um all of which were all completely different and systems i've never heard of before um so like all of them um i finally figured things out on the very last session of the uh, mini campaign so um yeah, this is a good experience. Uh, I, th I I think it's been really helping a lot in terms of um, learning how to role play better and more effectively. Um, just uh, and improvising a lot because, uh, as you guys might have surmised, I did not plan this character out uh, a single bit. So um, yeah, uh, there's that. So uh, it was a good experience. Um, forward to uh its eventual return on this channel so this we should see what happens <laughs> yeah that's 
That's the thing I always got to warn folks about is that uh, Amber is horribly, horribly addictive. Uh, these, uh, what can one do? What can one do? Uh, but thank you so much for playing, and I, 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 I really liked Lenata. Um, and it was really cool seeing him be as badass as he was today. <laughs> that was freaking awesome. Uh, and uh, I'm, um, it was really cool getting to just uh, throw stuff at him and see what he'd do with it. It was glorious. Chris. Hi. I had a blast. And all I can want is more sessions. So <laughs> I'm willing to bribe. <laughs> What would you like me to bribe you with? So, um, <laughs> but yes, this uh, it, 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 uh, there were some amazing scenes. I have to admit, my favorite is probably meeting Corwin, though, just because like, he's he's one of my favorite characters. So um, that was very awesome, and yeah. I would love a session with the same players because all of the characters have been fantastic. So great job! Nothing to plug. Uh, yeah, I I, uh, I really enjoyed having a Chaosian around. It was uh, it was very awesome. I, I think whenever I play Amber, which is not very often, I've I've only gotten to play once or twice, mostly uh, play by post stuff. And I think I do prefer playing Chaosians to Amberites. Um, but uh, it was uh, it was a lot of fun, and we finally got to play this. It's only been it's only been twenty years. <laughs> we finally made yeah, it. Yeah, twenty years that you promised. <laughs> Twenty years later, and I'm I'm hoping that the next time we play, it's not another twenty years. Hopefully, we, it'll be sooner than that. Uh, that would be <laughs> fantastic. And like I said, particularly with this group, this whole the, the all of the characters in this group have been fantastic. So, <laughs> yeah, indeed, very very cool, very cool. Um, and finally, Pope. Hey. hey everybody, Pope World Build on the Twitter, World Build on the Twitch. I lurk in all your streams and. Uh, I'm with Chris here. Uh, I love every single character, every single moment, and uh, as is becoming tradition with, with with this mini campaign, I love you, Jim. I hate you so much. Um, no, this <laughs> this was absolutely fantastic. I am in love with yeah each and every one of these characters, and I I want to see more. Uh, as as for just like moments and everything, everyone got moments to shine and just show who and what they are. And you don't get that with a lot of different game systems, but this one just keeps giving and giving and giving and allows you to succeed, uh, have that heroic moment or fail gloriously and I just deeply, deeply love that. And thank you, Jim, and thank you, everybody. Thank you. Thank you, Nino. Thank you, Anders. Thank you, thank you, Chris, so much for what what's easily been one of my best experiences RPG, period. Thank you all so much. Well, thank you for playing, man. It was, uh, I, I, was, I was very pleased when I saw you'd signed up for this uh, and, uh, because I know that you are uh, deep into storytelling uh, and uh, this uh, this is uh, a, a a very I mean this this game is made for it and so um, I'm I'm so glad uh, I got to play this with you. Um, as fans will note, I am uh, I, I am a deep fan of the books. I am a fan of Corwin. If folks hadn't been able to figure that out at this point, those of you who might know it. Uh, but uh, thank you so much, everyone, for watching. Um, uh, it's, uh, like I said, maybe there'll be more at some point in the future. We will see. We will see. Amber goes on forever. It's freaking addictive. Um, but as for me, I'm Jim Ryan. You can find me at OtherDoc on Twitch and Twitter. My website is jimyesthatjim.com, where you can find my Geek Observation podcast and links to my various other podcasts, audio dramas, writings, and such. I've got links down below to my website, Twitter, and YouTube channel. Um, what is happening? Uh, let's see. Um, uh, let's see. On, uh, on Friday, I'm going to be over on Off the Table playing in their Urban Shadows 1890s campaign. It might be the finale. Uh, we're within an episode of the finale. We're very close. Uh, things are going crazy. Uh, 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 dragons are possibly about to tear up the city, unless they don't. Um, 
and demons are fighting with angelic light creatures. It's, uh, you know, it's uh, Armageddon. A couple of Armageddons are happening out there. And uh, we'll have to see what happens. Um, there, there's a present day campaign that's been go that, that had gone for two seasons, and so hopefully the city isn't destroyed because that would make things very awkward and temporally messed up. But, yeah, you know, there, there are ways around that, so we'll have to see. Um, back on this channel, on Saturday nights, uh, we play Invisible Sun, The Edge of Paradox, our Invisible Sun campaign here. Uh, Anita's part of that, and we have uh, other wonderful players in that. Uh, that I've been enjoying quite a lot. Uh, actually, and it is running and playing Amber that kind of informed a good deal of how I play and run Invisible Sun. Uh, because there are there are certain things that actually can carry over. Um, a lot of it has to do with stat comparisons within NPCs. I won't get into the nitty gritty of it, but uh, it is uh, it is an interesting and cool thing where I can get to stretch some of those muscles again that I've not stretched for a long time. Um, on Sundays, we do one-shots here. Um, so this Sunday, uh, uh, we're going to be doing a one-shot of Fiasco. Um, and, uh, the, the schedule next month for the one-shots has gotten a little bit vaguer than it was. Um, I still have, I'm still planning to try and do Flat Pack, um, at some point, which is a, a it's a game about an optimistic apocalypse. Uh, post-apocalypse, rather. Trying to rebuild the world, and I'm hoping to get that to, that here soon. There are some things going on that are kind of messing with my schedule, so I'll see kind of how things are going, but uh, hopefully, hopefully we'll be uh, getting to that. Also, we have next month's mini-campaign, which is Mashed. Uh, that is something uh, kind of inspired in part by the TV show, but it's, uh, it's a Powered by the Apocalypse game about the Korean War, uh, with a lot of uh, pain and... Uh, and love and dark comedy and things of that nature in it. Uh, I'm very much looking forward to trying uh, trying it out. It is a different game, even a different PBTA game from the others that I've uh, participated in. Very interested to see it. Uh, Signups are actually still open if anyone wants to try and jump in. Uh, they so, Signups close tomorrow, so this is your last chance if you'd like to try and get in on that. Uh, schedule options are listed on the sign-up form. Uh, you can uh, go down to RPG sign up down below or go to jimmyusthatgym.com and click on game sign up and it is there. As always, beginners are welcome. So when we go to the end card, I'm going to send a raid uh, over to off the table, I think. Oh, they're on break. <laughs> we'll probably do a break raid. We'll see. Uh, they're playing Alas for the Awful Sea. Uh, which is a series that has just come back. They're getting into their second uh, season, I believe, with it uh, for this campaign. And uh, it's a uh, the first time I think they've got the whole cast back together again. Um, so we're going to head over there. And feel free to come along and say hi if you are so inclined. Um, so always feel free to hang out and do that if you like. Uh, like I said, that will be at the end card. Well, folks, that's that. Thank you all so much for watching. Take care. Goodbye and hello, as always.